Pamela has become a pitiful victim. She is a dependent woman that I rescued emotionally, financially, and socially. We were not a good match. Thank you. I fell in love with Lori because I did truly discover my soulmate. Lori and I have everything that I tried desperately to create with Pamela. I am also a fan of massage and she was a licensed masseuse. Pete is amazing. He's my very best friend. I really do like that uh, dress. Do you? Yeah. We miss each other very much during the day. When we're together, we walk and hike. Pamela set Pete up, even though she told him that they were separated. She hired a PI to follow him and find him at my house. She wanted to prove that he was being unfaithful. Pamela tried to sue Lori for adultery. There's no fury like a scorned wife. In our state, the spouse can sue you for alienation of affection, meaning I stole his affection from her. She wanted $375,000. There is no case there. We did not have a loving marriage. We were separated under the same roof well before Lori even entered the picture. With Lori, I have a teammate. I have a partner who I don't feel is just sucking the life out of me. Okay, so I, I've, you've been listening to the show so far. She's saying that right up until the day you left to go to this couple's retreat, that you weren't separated, that you were in fact actively engaged in an intimate relationship with her. Mm -hmm. Is that not true? Yeah, that is not true, Dr. Phil. So, well, wait a minute, mm -hmm. so she's lying about that? That's correct. Okay. No. So I am telling the truth. I've never wavered and will not. The retreat was in September of 2011. Uh -huh. We had been sleeping separate. I was sleeping upstairs on a mattress on the attic floor, probably from about the beginning of that year. So for nine months? He began sleeping yes. on a mattress upstairs sometime after I broke my arm on October 17th, 2011, because just like with my pregnancies, it was too disturbing for him to get the sleep he said he needed to work. Well, uh, it did not stop him from coming down, sitting on the couch at night, loving scratching backs with our kids sitting right there with us, going up, having sex in our marriage bed, and then eventually later on, some nights, he would go on upstairs. Okay, now listen, I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get the facts here because uh, you do counseling, right? That's right. You yeah. have to deal with the facts here. Yeah. Somebody's not telling the truth. I hate uh, he said, she said scenario. I understand how you feel. I was sleeping upstairs. I'm not saying that we never ever had intimate relationships. What I'm saying is that it was very dissatisfying, very unhappy, and it didn't happen the way that Pamela is saying it. But you did come downstairs and have intimate relations with her. On rare occasions. Okay, was one of those rare occasions right before you went on this couple's retreat without your wife? No, I don't believe so. Yes, it was, no. and after he came back repeatedly. First Did you all, have relations with her after you came back from the couple's retreat you went to without your wife? Well, yes. first of all, it was not a couple's retreat. It was an individual retreat that I went on seeking discernment for my life. Mm -hmm. And I came away from there with the conviction that my marriage was not viable. It would have been nice if my husband had shared that information with me. 